Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? Winning Cures Everything NFL Week 6 Gambling Picks. Drop down the sweet jams. Just a little bit there. All right. <sighs> this is when it cures everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. I went two and four last week. You went three and two. Went three and two. Hit the big one. Laid no juice on everything else. So profitable week. No I lots. I lost one hundred and six dollars ninety three cents. You won two hundred and forty four dollars and seventy seven cents on the season. I am eleven and seventeen. I am down 8.93 units. You are 11 and 13. You are down 0.32 units. So you are doing better than me, but both of us are in the red currently. Correct. Who was not in the red was last week's Pick'em Contest winner. Carol C. and her girls picked 8 and 2 against the number not too shabby. You can also join in the Pick Contest every week. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. Go up on the navigation bar where it says Football Picks Contest. Click that thing, put in an email, put in your name, enter your picks there. It'll be super easy. All you got to do is take a couple of minutes and click multiple choice. That's all you got to do. So go knock that out, winningcureseverything.com. Of course, over there, you can find our social media stuff. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Uh, Twitter's at Winning Cures. I'm at Gary WCE. I'm at Chris B. Giannini. And you can find us on Facebook. We're also on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button for us. Of course, leave some comments. Tell us what you think we got right, what we got wrong, what you like about the show, what you don't like about the show. Just tell us what you're thinking, really. We would appreciate it. If you're listening on the podcast, make sure you subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, whatever your favorite podcast app is. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, leave a five-star review. Ask us a question. We're going to answer it on the show. Uh, Tell us what you like about the show. Tell everybody what you like about the show. Those reviews help out a bunch. The subscriptions help out a bunch. Uh, It puts it into this funky Apple algorithm. They dangle it all together, and then the stuff that actually gets the most subscriptions and the most reviews and all that kind of stuff, they put in like this nice little chart thing, and they put it in front of more people. And it helps more people hear the show. So we would... uh, Technical term. Technical term. the, The chart thingy. Chart thingy. Believe that. All right. So this is the... NFL Gambling Picks Show. It is brought to you by... I was just about to say. Tunica, Mississippi. Our people. Our friends in the Delta. They've got some good stuff going on down there, i got to tell you. You can find more information about it over at tunicatravel.com. They've got six incredible sports books. Everything they're doing down there is wonderful. We can vouch for all of it. We always have a good time when we go down. We know you will, too. Go over to tunicatravel.com and get more information about that. Let's jump in. You ready? Yep. You want to start us off? We, we both got five this week, right? Yeah, I'll start us off. All right, let's uh, let's do it then. I'm going to roll into the Thursday night game. My New England Patriots are at home against Danny Dime and the Giants. A rookie quarterback going to New England is just not going to bode well. It is 16 and a half points. a lot of points in an NFL game. I'm laying all 16 and a half. 16 and a half was the same thing last week. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But now, this team, substantially better than Washington? Yeah, I think so. But it doesn't matter. This is this is still a rookie quarterback going against Bill Belichick, bad defense. And guess what? The defense for the Giants, not great. I think the Patriots will run on them. I think they will throw on them. Um, I have no earthly idea who will be running the football for the Giants. I don't think Saquon will be back for this game. And we know Gallaudet. Galladay? Was that his Galladay, name? Yeah. Gall- Galloway? Galladay? Galladay. He is, yeah. he is out as well. Um, I, I, Danny can't do it all. Okay? <laughs> and not against this defense. No, I, I think, think you're the right. kid's going to be much better than people gave him credit for when he was drafted. Not against this Patriots defense. Yeah. I think they're out for blood. I think they are. And I, I really think Belichick likes sticking it to the Giants. Those are the two losses. And this it costed him, costed, cost, cost him, him a nineteen and zero perfect season. I, I'm telling you, there is still bad blood there. Oh yeah, he's he's gonna completely be different front office, completely different it everything. Does not matter. Doesn't matter. The logo on that jersey is going to to be if he can beat them by as many as he can beat them by, he's going to. 
Yep. They will not be pulling guys out of this game. I think you're probably right. Uh, what's uh, what's your money total on this one? Minus one ten. Hundred dollars. Hundred dollars at minus one ten. All right, so you feel good about this one. I do. All right, I feel good about this one. I am going to Minneapolis. That's right. That's right. I'm going to bet the opposite way in Minneapolis. I'm taking the Eagles plus three here. Uh, look, Eagles five and one against the spread in their last six road games. Of course, Vikings are five and one against the spread in their last six home games. But Philly, number two in the NFL on opponent yards per rush attempt. Look, when you're looking at things like yards per point margin, Minnesota, 4.1 at number six. Philly is 3.0 at number seven. It's kind of just right there. The metrics actually have this at the Vikings minus 2.98. I think the Eagles can get a lead here. They tend to play uh, a little more aggressive when they are on the road for whatever reason. So I agree with that. With that, I like the Eagles here. I think if you can stop the run, you can beat the Vikings. And the Eagles are the best in the NFL at stopping the run. Give me the Eagles, plus three, 50 bucks at minus 110. My next play, San Francisco going to L.A. Okay. The 5-0 and 49ers. The first place in the NFC West 49ers. 4-0, right? 4-0. Yep. Yeah, they had a bye week. Yep. That's right. 4-0. 49ers. They're catching three and a half going to the Rams. Now, I, I don't know that the Rams are going to lose three games straight. They're a good football team. They're well coached. They've had a lot of time off. They played Thursday. 49ers played Monday. Mm, some of them played Monday. A lot of them got a lot of rest because they beat the hell out of the Browns. They didn't break a sweat. <laughs> so, I, I think three and a half is too many. It might only be too many by the hook. But I think the 49ers' front seven is real good. I think they're going to get to Jared Goff. Oh, yeah. I think they're going to slow down the run of Todd Gurley. And I I think, realistically, I think this is going to be a lower scoring game than people think it might be. I don't think this is going to be a game where they're going to put up a bunch of points. And I think their offense is fine. I, yeah. I think their offense can absolutely score. I think their offense is better than Seattle's, better than Cleveland's, yeah. better than Carolina's. Kyle Shanahan knows what the hell he's doing, and it's taken him a while to get him there. I think they're there. Can they go 5-0? and I don't know. Will the Rams lose three in a row? That would shock the hell out of me. But I'm going to take the three and a half points. I'm taking the 49ers. I agree with you. I'm, I'm doing that. What's uh what's your money total on that one? Um, oh, money total. Give me 75 bucks, and um, I got it at minus 105. Minus 105, okay. Yeah, let me get back there. That's I had it at minus 110 earlier. I want to make sure that didn't move. I'll give, if it's 110 now, I'll give it 110. I'm not afraid of that. I want to be honest. Fuck, it's been every stinking time. <laughs> every time. Page. So every stupid. time, this is fantastic. Right, so I, I agree with you the can, 49ers you can, here. Yeah, you can talk. Uh, I've got the 49ers plus three and a half. I've also got 75 bucks on them. I had it at minus 110. If you've got it at minus 105, I'll take the we're 105. Gonna, we're going to take the extra juice. Um, look. Well, I got it. Hold it. Oh, shit. Okay. What? We're good. Minus 110 is fine. Okay. We're good there. <laughs> uh, a margin that, or a, a metric that I like to use is yards per point margin. Okay. Uh, San Francisco, 4.6. They're number five in the NFL. LA, negative 1.1. They're number 21 in the NFL. Um, if you just want to look at yards per play, uh, I mean, the 49ers are number four in the NFL. The Rams' defense it gives up 5.4. They're number 10 in the NFL. The Rams' offensive yards per play, they're 6.0. They're number nine in the NFL. De- uh, the 49ers' defense gives up only 4.5 yards per play. They're number four in the NFL on that one. 49ers, across the board, really good football team. Now, they're a really good football team. I, I don't know that the 49ers have played as good of offenses as the Rams. The common opponent, Tampa Bay, they went across the country, played them, held them to very few points. Yeah. Tampa Bay went to L.A. and put an ass whooping on that defense. Yes, they did. I mean, this, put this the stank on them, 55. Been, this defense has been really bad here lately. Uh, I love that. 49ers plus 3.5 at the Rams, uh, 75 bucks at minus 110. I think that the 49ers are still being a little bit undervalued, and everybody still looks at the Rams as 
oh, it's it, Sean McVay, he'll get it figured out. That's right. I think they, they might have some problems. I, I might be wrong on this, the low scoring thing. I do think that that defense will figure some things out. I, I could yeah. be wrong. I mean, they, they can get 40 hung on them again. I mean, Seattle put a bunch of points on them. Tampa Bay put a bunch of points on them. I mean, the only I mean, teams don't, that, don't forget that that Super Bowl slump thing after, it's after a, making it's, it. No, it's real. It's real. It, it is real. It is real. So I, I do like the 49ers. I mean, it didn't hurt the Patriots last year, but it's real. <laughs> they're they're kind of you got to break the mold and say they're just different than everybody. Yes, else. I mean 100%. That, that is not a me being a fan of them. I know the rest of the world hates them, and, and rightfully so. I get it, but it it's just they break all the trends. Yeah, no, I'm with you. All right. But uh, next game for you. I'm going to the state of New Jersey. Okay. And I'm going to bet against the Jets just because they're a bad football team. I don't think they're good. I think they're struggling to find wins. And the Cowboys beat up on bad teams. Yes, they do. When they beat somebody, they beat the crap out of them. When they lose, they kind of get the crap beat out of them. Um, It's ugly. And uh, the Jets are not a good football team. And I don't think the Jets can hang with this Cowboys team. And I think they're going to let some frustration out. What uh, what lines you get them? I got them eight and a half minus one ten. Give me seventy five dollars on it. Seventy five dollars minus one ten. Cowboys minus eight and a half. Yes, sir. Is it still eight and a half? Is it because I, before I came over here, it had dropped to like seven and a half. Okay. Give some information. All right. Vegas Insider has it at seven. Let's go to an. So actual, it dropped again. I'm going to an actual sports book. Oh, it is seven at one ten. Can I take seven at one ten? Yeah, seven, seven. That's a point and a half. And like, I looked at this well, at no, three it, o'clock this afternoon. It, it right? opened at uh, at nine, so but it's dropped two points. What? I didn't know that. I looked at it this afternoon. Yeah. At, opened at, at nine on on Sunday evening, and has been bet down over the last two days two points. So, just something to toss out there, just to see, just to see. All right, next one up for me. I'm going to Green Bay on Monday night. And I'll tell you why. Okay. Because I think the Packers are a really, really damn good football team. Um, Yards per point margin, Green Bay, 6.1, number four in the NFL. Detroit, 1.1, number 13 in the NFL. There's a there's a wide chasm here. And chasm? Chasm? Chasm. Sweet Lord. It's been a long night. Long night. Uh... <laughs> There's a, there's a big divide there between these two teams. And I think that the Packers are a significantly better team, a significantly better defense, I think. Uh, I think Aaron Rodgers is going to get it fixed. He, he has given the Lions nightmares for years. Um, and I think they continue it here. I like the Packers on Monday Night Football in prime time. I think they want to show out a little bit, especially in the division. They have, uh, they've beaten everybody else in the division. They will continue the ways here. I like the Packers minus four and a half. Uh, I've got 50 bucks at minus 110 here. I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to okay. take the Lions. I, I think what the Lions are doing is pretty special right now. Um, I think they're, they're, they're struggling to win games against good teams, but they're playing everybody tight. They're playing everybody close. Absolute chicanery to, uh, to lose to the Chiefs yeah. barely uh, before the bye week. They had a bye week. Get some guys healthy. A little bit of a rest. Um, and... I think this team is really good in the trenches. Yeah. They can run the ball. They've got receivers that can get open. I think this might be the best offense that the Packers have played. Is that, is that legal to say? Because I don't I don't think it's the Cowboys. And it you damn sure ain't the right. Bears or the Broncos. No, it's not And that. I don't know who the hell else they play. The Vikings. Wow. Yeah. So the Cowboys have a really good offense when they play bad defenses. But, but not when every, they play good defense. Everybody, every time they play a good defense, they fall apart. The Lions have played decent defenses, yeah, bad defenses, and they're good against everybody. Um, and they're good in the trenches, and that's what matters. Um, they've played really good offenses. I think the Chiefs' offense substantially better than the Lions uh, than the Packers. They played them well. Um, I'm I'm just gonna trust that Matt Patricia week off. I think this team's gonna be ready. Okay. Okay. I, I like the. I also don't think that the Packers are going to just sweep this division. They, they've beaten the first two guys. At some point in time, divisional games are hard. Oh, yeah. I, no, think, I, agree I think at some point, the, the, the bloom falls off the rose. They're not going to continue to roll on people. No, they might. But. That's, it's Monday Night Football at Lambeau. 
Yep. So, I mean, we'll see. Okay. Uh, but they, I mean, remember, they've still got to go on the road to these teams as well. That's so. right. Um, what, uh, what's your money total? Uh, 75. 75 but, yeah, I'm going yeah, to basically be 75 all the way down. All right. I got the Patriots big. Everybody else is going to be 75. Okay. Uh, next up for me, let's see. I've got the Atlanta Falcons and the Arizona Cardinals. And I'm not going to take a side on this one. I'm actually betting the total. I'm going over 51 and a half here. In the last three games for both of these teams, opponent yards per play, Arizona number 25 in the NFL. They're giving up 6.2 yards per play. Atlanta number 31. They're giving up seven yards per play over the last three games. These two defenses cannot figure out anything. And both of these offenses love to score. They both got playmakers. They both got quarterbacks that love to fling it around, they are going to be able to put up points at 51 and a half. I mean, you're looking at, you need 27 to 25, you know, to hit 52. Now, our guy Roser would tell you it's a bad bet. You just blindly bet the under when it's 50. Oh, yeah, yeah, he'll he'll tell you that. But, I mean, there were some that lost that. So That's right. It's all good. Uh, I do like over 51 and a half here. Uh, I think that this is actually too low here. I could see both of these teams in the 30s. Um, and even if one doesn't get there, I think the other one does. So I will take uh, the Falcons and the Cardinals over 51.5 for $75 at minus 110. I'm going to stay on the same game for my last bet. Okay. I'm going to take the Arizona Cardinals at home, home dog, plus 2.5 against the Falcons. I I don't know what we've seen to think that this Falcons team is better than the Cardinals. They have the same record now. Yeah. I, I don't know... A single metric that tells me the Falcons are better than the Cardinals. I mean, I hadn't found one. I, I think this is about as even as a game you get. I'm taking the home team. I'm taking the team that's hot, that just came off a win. They get to come home. That was a great flight back from Cincinnati. And 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 I think this team is going to maybe find some rhythm and, and get things rolling. And you get a soft defense coming to Arizona. I think the best defense for the Cardinals is just to hang on to the football. Yeah, you're probably right. It, it, Mike Lombardi says this all the time. The best the best way to play defense is to not play defense. I do like that, that idea. That is that is his philosophy that he tried to build teams with. Um, it, it was he, he learned it from Bill Walsh, Bill Belichick, coaching with those guys and and, and doing with those guys. And that's a that's a really good philosophy. He says it all the time. Yeah. The best way to play de- play de- the best defense is to not play. No, that's that and, and if I was the, possession matters. Yes, if I was if I was the Cardinals in this game, I want ball control. And I think they have the t- style the tile style of offense to do ball control more than I think the Falcons do. I think a lot of that depends on on whether or not Johnson comes back. Right, man. I don't know because I think their offense is not so much going deep down the field. But their their running game in the air raid is a short passing game. Yeah, it's I mean, very that, efficient. It, yes, it's it's seven yard pass, six yard pass, nine yard pass. The difference here is all of those routes usually go out. I would I would bring them in across the middle, and and because I don't I want the clock. I want it to tick 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 tick. Okay. I want to hold the ball, and I want the clock to burn 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 burn. I, okay, I can I can get with it. Uh, which is 75 or 75. Nope. Uh, I'm actually, I'll, I'll do 110 because I don't like messing with the juice. You can get it at minus 105. No, I'll, take, I'll, take the 105. Take the 105. Okay. I, I always hate taking. No, no, no. If, no, no, if, no, if no, everybody no, else no. can't get it, I don't want to. Yeah, wanna but take it, that. You, if, if they bet there, they can. It, it's you, true. You go over to some of these different ones, Sportsbook Review, whatever. You can, yeah. Yeah, you you can, can find, find the best line. You can, you can find the, the best line. That is right. So you found the best line. That's right. Uh, or at least we think, anyway. Last one for me, I'm going to go to London. That's right. I'm so excited about this game because this is the 9 a.m. game. Yes. And Eight, I love, well, 8.30 Central. Yes. I love waking Central up, time. making me a pot of coffee. Yeah, it's, a good, it's going to be a good time. I like the pregame shows. I'd much rather just wake up and go to football. We may need to talk about this okay. because we, we do the recap, like college football recap at 9.30. We're going to do it earlier. You just got to wake your ass up. And I don't know. We'll talk about it. Because I remember, I stay up until like 1, 1.30 in the morning. Watching back for after dark? Well, that. But what if we just also. do it then? Instead of just putting it together, idea. let's just do it. I mean, we're both going to be up watching back to after dark. 
my in laws in town. I'm I'm not sleeping. I'm just gonna stay outside. We'll talk about this after the show. <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll, we'll discuss it. We'll figure it out. Um, so yeah, the Panthers and the Bucks in London. This was a Tampa Bay home game. Now it is, I guess, technically a Tampa home game. Well, it's a but, home, I mean, yeah, it's well, their home way. game, but it's in London. I love the London game. The Bucks went to Carolina earlier this year, handled Cam Newton. Okay. They won the game. Yep. Now, it came down to the wire, right? It came That's down right. to a fourth down call where they ran Christian McCaffrey off, off the side or whatever. That's right. Uh, bad play call. I think this is different. Since that game, the Panthers are undefeated. Now, the Bucs have also gone over to the West Coast, beat the crap out of the, uh, the Rams. Well, they are your typical Bucs. Right. They They're are about as up, up and down yeah. as, as you can find out. And last week, luckily, they played pretty well against New Orleans. Yes, sir. I think I like the Panthers here. Panthers, two-point favorite, yards per point. Since Kyle Allen took over. Yards per play? Yeah, well, no, yards per point. I don't margin. know what that Oh. Yeah, it's a yards per point margin, so what your defense does and what your offense does, right? Okay. So, Carolina. 4.8, they're number four in the NFL. This is basically the, the most true metric to tell how good a team is. Man, I don't even know how to calculate this stuff. It's, it's Well, yards, so yards per point on offense is, is now how many yards per how many points, et cetera. Okay. And then on defense, it's how many yards you've given up per how many points you've given up. Oh, okay. And that's right. the margin. That's not so hard. Yeah. I got it now. So I'm so good at math, but and I, didn't, I didn't understand. It is a very... Basic, it doesn't tell you the whole story, but it gives you the roundabout. Okay. Right? I like it. Carolina. I like it better than yards per play. Yeah. Because yards per play is like, a is a bullshit number. Yeah, it really it's is. Just the truth. Uh, so yards per point margin. Since Kyle Allen took over for the Panthers, Carolina 4.8. That's number four in the NFL. So if you're just going like power rating style, they'd be the number like the fourth best team in the NFL. Tampa on and offense those, or defense? Just period, as a team. This is yards per point margin. So it's offense and defense. Average together. Yes. Oh, man. I'm I know. Not, it's, it's kind I'm of I'm not going to like this stat, but go ahead. Tampa, number 12. I like the side you're on. I agree with it. I'm going to be betting the Panthers in this game as well. I'm, I'm not. I but don't, you don't like stats. I don't, I don't you, follow the I'm – not, I'm not following the logic. The, the analytics stuff is, is a little – so let me like, ask you this. I know I'm, I'm interrupting you a lot, and it's probably really confusing for people. I really want to know this. If a quarterback throws for 500 yards but throws four picks and and only scores like 15 points, he threw for a lot of yards for very little points. Is that good? Are you Because you've got in a this, high point per – In this, it's bad. I was going to say, but so you want to have a low yards per point. Yes. Because that, you would have I mean, a very high yard well, per point, right? You're, you would have 500 yards and 10 points. Yes and no. Right? So you so, would have a... That's why I hate some of these, because you can throw for a ton of yards, lose the game completely. Here we go. Get dominated by the other team, but NFL, you have a crap load of yards. NFL team yards per point margin. Number one in the NFL. They're going to be number one in every category there is. New England at 22.9. Okay. Now... That's partly because their last one well, yeah. was 18. 18. I was just about to say, they beat the hell out of it. And then they also played the Dolphins, which, yes. yeah, they destroyed. And the Jets. Uh, the last place team is Miami at minus 23. So th this is the margin. So I, if your defense gives up a bunch. I'm just curious you know, on, does it? How it works. I'm just curious, does it? If a metric shows that a quarterback had a good game at 450, 500 yards, a monster game, but it, 300 yards. But, but if you don't, but he threw, but he, but he threw for very few points. They scored very few points because he turned the ball over a lot. Well, look, it's yards per point, right? So, so that it, you're going to have a lot of yards per point because the lower your point totals are, the better know, your yards you, are. If you don't have that many points, then that's a that's a problem. I think it should be points per yard. Then. Well, it, okay, so yards per point sounds point. like. I'm, I know this is bad radio, and people at home are like, just shut up, Chris. But yards per point, I'm going to use the example I used. Right. Throw for 500 yards, you got 10 points. 500 divided by 10, basically you got 50 yards per point. You throw for 500 yards, you score 50 points. 40 points. Yeah. I added those. 
<laughs> out of 40. You got 12.5. So it's much lower. Well, so you're also looking at the defensive side of it as well. So when you're when you're putting those together as far as the margin goes. I don't goes, care about the average. I really want to know. Because if the offensive number is wrong, then it doesn't matter if the defensive number is right. It just doesn't matter. Here we go. But so, if it's point per yard, now we're now we're having a different conversation. No, 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 because you're you're wanting to get the, the lower number. So like number one. Yeah, in the NFL, I want a low number. I want a little number. Yeah. In the NFL, yards per point, twelve for Philadelphia. Okay. That means that you're more efficient. Yes. Right? So last place is Miami at thirty four point six. This is exactly what I'm on. Good. Yeah. It's it's golf. So the low number is better. That's all I asked. Yeah. That's what I was trying to get to earlier. I'm sorry. I know that was terrible to watch and listen to. Yes. The if if you you want a little number on offense, and you want a little number on defense. Yeah, pretty much. I'm good with that. I mean, you you want that's a stat you want I like. Bigger numbers for both, but you want it to average out to less. I, all all I know is, I just want to make sure because any metric because yards per play is killed by turnovers, but it doesn't factor in turnovers, and Let's that's see. and that's what I hate. NFL team opponent yards per point. New England thirty five point one. Okay. You then you got Chicago twenty two point. So you want a big number. You want a big number on the defense. You want a little number on the offense. Yeah. So when it comes to totally get it now, and that makes that makes me understand and feel. So when it like comes to the margin, stat. like that's what you want. Nope, I'm good. So when it comes to the margin, you want the bigger number. I feel yeah. I I don't I don't I don't agree with that. Because you don't, well, you don't care about the margin so much. You you want to. I think you should look at them individually. I don't think you should average them together. Well, because you you play offense and defense. But get, yeah, you you get that. Like, but if you're, you're really at good it, at yeah. one and really bad at the other, just averaging them doesn't give you a true stat of what you are. Okay, okay, you got a valid point there. Either way, I'm taking the Panthers minus two Sorry. in London. I know that was terrible. No, no, no that, that was actually okay. Is, I apologize. That was. Uh, you this want one to, ran a little bit longer, but I think sometimes it's good to get into these, right? You want a little number on offense, big number on defense? I just struggle with analytics because so many things aren't factored into analytics. Right. And you can make numbers say whatever you want. I've seen too many times teams get down, they throw for a metric crap ton of yards, okay, that's a technical term, and and they don't put up a lot of points. They turn the ball over, and if you look at yards per play, they – They've done really, really well. well that, but, they didn't do really well. I watched scored, the game. They got you know, dominated. Yeah. They didn't do well. And that's why I just wanted to verify you want a little number for the offense because yeah. if you turn the ball over four times, you've got a crap load of yards, but you didn't score, then that person would have a very high yards per point number. I don't want that. Right. I want efficient. I guess the number that I was trying to figure out, efficient. I want that. So we're good. Okay. Good All stat. Right. I like that analytic. That is so much better than yards per play. I didn't oh, know yeah. that it was a thing. Yeah, yards yards per point I'm definitely. Uh, I'm not there's out another, of all analytics. There's another thing I was reading today that was like, uh, I think it was the same thing. It was uh, points per 100 yards. We've given all our picks. Now we're just talking. Yeah, it was like points per 100 yards, and it was a, a pretty telling thing. Okay. But I haven't found anywhere that actually just gives it to you, so I might have to just put it together. But does the 100 yards matter if you get points per yard? It's, it's just a basic... I think it's, this it's, is It's a better, kind of the same thing. Yeah, it's, I would say, yeah. at the end of the day, it's it's apples and apples. Yeah, this is just something and if you're, you're wanting to you're look... You're eating an apple and they're eating applesauce. They just mash it up, put a little sugar on it, and did something different. I like sugar. Just saying. Me too. <laughs> That's a problem. All right, that is going to wrap it up. Of course, we got our buddy uh, TJ Reeves coming in from the Three Dog Thursday podcast, and you can hear that interview now. All right, joining us now, TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. You can follow him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. TJ leaving uh, Tropicana Field, of course. The Tampa Bay Rays <laughs> got the win this evening and forced a game five with the Houston Astros. And that game five will take place while you are jumping across the pond. Is that correct? I'm headed to London with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Good to be with you guys on the NFL version of your show. Absolutely. And, yes, uh, having been to Los Angeles, having been to New Orleans, why don't we just go across the Atlantic and go to London <laughs> now with the uh, the Buccaneers and the Carolina Panthers rematch? So 
That one will be interesting, and it's Breakfast with the Bucks. Breakfast with the Bucks and the Panthers, because that is an 8.30 start your time, 9.30 Eastern time. Adjust your time zone accordingly uh, for that game in London. So, yeah, it's been it's been quite the week. There's a lot of uh, enthusiasm over the Rays, the Major League Baseball team winning game three and game four in their playoff series. Maybe they'll give the Bucks some, some momentum as we head over to the U.K. for this football game on Sunday. Now, yeah. Chris, so, go ahead and jump in here. Yeah, so I, I was looking up some numbers, and they talked about it during the Bears-Raiders game. The Raiders went straight over after their game last week um, on the East Coast and uh, stayed the entire week, and the Bears treated it like a normal game, came over on Thursday, and or either maybe came over on Friday, and uh, right. didn't play well, didn't get their legs under them, and they talked about it on the broadcast that statistically, when the teams treat it like a normal week, and they travel late, They the jet lag is extreme. It's hard to get your legs under them. And on the defensive side of the ball is where teams really struggle. You saw it with the Bears. Um, the Bucks are going over normal. Both teams going at the same time. Have you seen that change affect, you know, when the Tampa Bay's going over there? What, what, do, you, what do you got well, from that? So my understanding is Carolina's going Thursday as well. They did not go earlier in the week, and we are going Thursday. So you fly all night, and with the time change, you arrive Friday morning in London. Uh, and I, the only thing I can relate this to is in 2011, the Buccaneers did go for the entire week. Uh, and they had a 4-2 and two record. They were playing Lovey Smith's Chicago Bears. The Bears came over on Thursday, like what we're talking about, and dominated the game. Now, Brian Erlacher had a lot to do with that. Forget about just time zones and jet lag. When 54, the Hall of Famers, knocking your quarterback around, it doesn't matter if he showed up a week early or 15 minutes before the game. So, uh, it, another and another reference point, when the Bucks played the, uh, the Patriots in um, 2009 in London, Bill Belichick and the Patriots showed up uh, on Friday morning the same way, normal routine, and won the game easily. So, Okay. It varies. I, I, I got you that the data says if you're there longer, you might be fresher at the beginning of the game. Then again, the Raiders were up 17 nothing, and the Bears came roaring back and had the lead. So uh, we'll see how this goes for both teams with them doing the same thing. And obviously this is a rematch game of a Buccaneer win on Thursday night football. So intriguing because Carolina's won three straight, and the Bucks don't want to lose back-to-back games, guys. Now you got that right. It, it, the Bucks so far have looked – Pretty, pretty good. I mean, they look good in New Orleans. They look great in L.A. Uh, this, I mean, Bruce Arians may have figured this team out. He, he may have them on the right side of things. Uh, let's talk about some other NFC teams, though. I'm, I'm curious your thoughts. Maybe you've got a leaning one way or another. The Falcons are going to the Cardinals. And I don't know that there is anything about the Falcons that has shown me that they would be able to win a road game, and they are two-and-a-half-point favorites. It could just be a dog that you're looking at. I believe you've honed in on one. Amen from me. I could not figure out after watching the Texans put 53 on them last week how Atlanta, which is a 1-4 and four Atlanta team, would go to Arizona and be favored. Uh, and, and I know we've talked about this on your show. We joke about it all the time that – they have those monolith casino buildings, multi, multi-million dollar casino buildings because we all think we have it figured out, and actually they have it figured out with the point spreads. But uh, you know, Kyler Murray and, and Arizona won last week, and Atlanta has one victory, and it was a shaky victory at that on Sunday Night Football against the Eagles, and they have two or three decisive losses out of the four losses. So that's a very attractive home doggy there. But why, I mean, why are you listening to me here on the NFL underdogs when I got Chris Giannini, who last week was all over the Indianapolis Colts on Sunday night football against the Chiefs? I bow to you, Brother Giannini, and worship at the altar of your Indianapolis Colt 11-point dog pick. Yeah, no, and, and I have the Cardinals this week um, in our gambling picks as well. Uh, people listen to the podcast, I already heard that. And uh, yeah, I, I I think I just don't understand why Atlanta's favored over anybody right now. I, I I don't get especially on the road. Well, and again, sometimes I I played that hunch last week because the Giants had looked good with a win uh, at home against the Redskins. Of course, that's more about how bad the Redskins are and have been and will be apparently. And so I thought with Minnesota coming in there in a bit of disarray, that would be a good spot for the Giants, and Minnesota won the game decisively, and Kirk Cousins actually played very well. So 
Uh, you don't know, and maybe Matt Ryan and Julio Jones, I mean, there's a tremendous amount of offensive talent on that team. Maybe they do get it together uh, and, and put something together in the desert, and then again, maybe they get drop kicked to one and five at this point, and Dan Quinn, the, the heat on, on Dan Quinn's seat gets turned up even more, guys. Well, Gary doesn't think they can stop anybody. Of course, statistically, they can't stop anybody. Um, he, he's betting the over in this game. Well, and there's a lot there's a lot of reason for that because of the, the lack of cardinal defense. I would agree uh, that that would make that attractive as well. So uh, I'm it's more me not believing in Atlanta here than but then backing Arizona me too. Uh, as much as anything. I, I will complete I will completely mimic that exact same thing. I just don't I just don't think that team's good football. All right, so so let's talk about some other teams that maybe not so good. You you brought this up uh, when we were talking off air just for a minute, and I'm curious if this is one that you might lean. I, I never know what to make of this team. I'm never betting on this team again because they cost me so much early. Uh, but the Titans, two point dogs <laughs> at Denver. Uh, I cannot figure this team out. I don't know when they're going to play well when they're not. Uh, I I don't trust the head coach. But at the same time, like Denver, big time division win on the road last week. They come back home. This is the perfect letdown spot, and the Titans have got to get off the mat. It, is this one maybe that you're uh, that you're leaning on? It's the same. Yeah, it's the same kind of thing of uh, trying to figure out why is Denver favorite. It's probably the home field at Mile High. Then again, they've been beaten twice at Mile High by the Bears and by the Jaguars already this season. And the Titans are like an every other week team right now. They look fantastic against Giannini's Browns in the opening week. And then the, the Colts put the old fashioned pro wrestling sleeper hold on them. The same thing they did to the chiefs last week. And, and then they bounce back and they go to Atlanta and look impressive, the Titans. And then last week against Buffalo again, like in a fog, uh, missing all the field goals as well in a close game. But I think they, they will go on the road here and put things together. That's a strong lean on the Tennessee Titans at Denver. Excellent run game, probably a low-scoring game. Um, Marcus Mariota, let's see how he does at altitude in this one. But t- Tennessee's a team I will look at on Three Dog Thursday, boys. Yeah, new kicker coming in, all kind of different stuff. <laughs> they, they got all kinds of stuff working their way. I, uh, I like it. Everybody go check out the Three Dog Thursday podcast. Of course, we're going to talk NFL gambling. We're going to talk college football gambling over there. Only dogs on TJ's podcast. That's right. It's a fantastic. That's right. And you're going to be, and Gary Seegers, you're going to be with me making some underdog predictions. Again, we hit on five of them combined last week in college Ooh. football and the NFL, including Chris Giannini with two of them uh, last week on the show. So you've got a standard to live up to, my friend, this week. Oh, I, I feel up to the challenge. I'm feeling good this week. I, I think I've got some for you. So we'll uh, we'll jump on there. We'll do that. Of course, you can find TJ on Twitter, at Buck Sideline Guy. Go check out the Three Dog Thursday podcast. TJ, we appreciate you, buddy. Always good to be with the winning cures, guys. Thank you. All right, we appreciate TJ coming in with us. Good gracious, good gracious, what a time to be alive. It is the NFL Week 6, and I could not be more excited about it. All right, that wraps it up. This is Winning Cures Everything. You can find more information about us over at winningcureseverything.com. Don't forget, go enter the Football Picks Contest. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. If you're on the podcast, hit that subscribe button and share the show out. Leave a nice review. We appreciate TJ from the Three Dog Thursday podcast coming on. Go check out his podcast. You can find him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. And I went 2 0 1 on his podcast just last week. And that one up there. Nope, over there. There you there go. There it is. Tunica, Mississippi. I'm Our going, friends in the Delta. I'm going to cash tickets this weekend. Believe that. Tunicatravel.com. You can find more information about all six of their incredible sports books. They've got some fun stuff going on down there. We guarantee it. We will vouch for it. They got good stuff. So winningcureseverything.com, tunicatravel.com, and we will see you guys again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.